All right, welcome back. Bruce Porter joins us now for this week's Dollars and Cents segment. Thanks for coming in. Good to be here. All right, always good to have you. We have a couple of questions from viewers today that yeah. we're going to go over. You say you're getting these questions all the time. Here is the first question. How do I take money out of my Roth retirement account at work, and will there be a penalty since I'm only 46 years old? First of all, why are people taking money out of their account early? Well, I mean, a lot of people are doing that because of the the crisis. Exactly. And they're, you know, in this year, 2020, there's some rules that are allowing people to access some of their money. Now, when it comes to a Roth, let's talk about the traditional uh, qualifications for how can I take money out of a Roth. There's only two conditions that have to be met. You have to be 59 and a half and uh, the, uh, or you have to be dead or disabled. So uh -huh. if you're not dead or disabled and you're younger, you can't really touch it without a penalty or taxes. And then uh, it must to have been in the Roth for at least five years, right? Okay. So it's got to be there for five years, and if it is, and you're 59 and a half, you could access your Roth without penalty uh, uh, or taxes, yeah. right? Because Roth is tax-free. Exactly. So but that's in, the difference in the two, in the traditional case, versus the Roth, right? At his age, uh, unless he's disabled, mm -hmm. won't be able to access that money. Now. The, they came up with this uh, CARES Act this year exactly. that allows you to take up to 100000 out of a qualified plan, mm -hmm. and there's rules that go along with that. Right. And that's where you can just call our office. We can help you navigate those rules on doing that that are not related necessarily to a Roth, but right. there are rules that are uh, associated with that as well. So there may be ways you can get a little bit of hand, you know, get your hands on Help. a little bit of your money that you may not, you may have heard of these things, but you think, well, I'm just not sure how this works right. or how it, you know, it applies to me. So Bruce can answer those questions for you. Now we have another follow up question to this. Yep. Here it is. Uh, where is a safe place to park money if we are concerned with the long term outlook in the markets? and the overall economy. Okay, safe place to park a little bit of money. I assume you're not gonna stay in a jelly jar in the backyard. Well, you could, that's you could. an option. Mattress, jelly jar, buried in the backyard, you can no. do that. But lot, right now with the crisis mm -hmm. lingering on, people are really kind of nervous about economics and the markets and what's going on, things like that. So the one thing that I've referred to on the show before, would you, would you go a day without insuring your home? Mm -hmm. Most people would say no. Now, the reason is it probably took them 30 years to pay for the mortgage to pick, get their home free and right. clear, right? Yeah. So if your house burns down, you'd want it replaced. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you apply the same thought process to your bucket of money? Okay. So, you know, it took your entire life to save your 401k or save your savings, your bucket of money. Mm -hmm. Why would you not contemplate insuring either all of it or part of it? So when you look at the insurance industry, it is very heavily regulated, uh, and when you look at guaranteed type accounts, they're backed by reserves. Right. So when you look at the safety of an insured type product mm -hmm. that can be part of a portfolio, you got to look at the reserves that the company that is offering the product has. It has on hand, sure. They've got very strict guidelines that they have to comply with. There's a lot of regulation through the NAIC, mm -hmm. uh, IAC, or NAIC <laughs> and the National Organization of Life and Health Insurance guarantees are all, all these regulations mm -hmm. come into play that come around the guaranteed aspects of annuities. So they basically have enough, they have to have enough reserves to pay claims. Exactly. And so when you're talking about insuring your money, you are talking about annuities, which we have talked on this program before. There are lots of them out there. How do you find the one for you? Well, that's where you've got to decide what your goals, objectives, and priorities, what's important to you, and whatever your gut tells you, that's what you've got to follow even into this process. Now, annuities can be a really safe, good aspect of a portfolio, but from an aggressive growth or a future growth or or uh, looking for opportunities for growth, that's always going to be in the market and, and you're going to have to have some aspect of an invested portfolio that way, but not all of it. So right. you don't have to have all or none right. of anything. Mm -hmm. A good mix is usually what we would look at, including cash reserves 
for emergencies. So exactly. we've, we've talked about that, and I use buckets to explain that yeah. uh, a lot. I've got them sitting right on my conference table, yeah. and it can be it that really simple. Yeah, and, it can be. And that's how we approach it. We got it. like 15 seconds, but when you talk about an annuity, what age is a person typically when they get into something like that? Uh, do younger people ever do that, or is it typically someone who's a little bit later in the years? Most of the time, younger people, due to age, you can weather the hills and valleys mm -hmm. of the market. So we would recommend that type of investing and just keep putting it in dollar cost averaging. If you're retired, approaching retirement, and you really don't want to take a chance mm -hmm. on having to rebuild your portfolio, uh, then you would consider either a, a, a larger portion or a portion of insured type contracts. To go into annuity, but doesn't it have to sit there for a while before you start maybe taking money out of Usually it? Usually about a year. Just a year, uh, okay. Some cases, not so much. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, plans that we can access after 30 right. days for income, things like that. Okay, so there are all so sorts there's of a lot of variables. Yeah. All right, if you have a financial question for Bruce, visit his website, resourcecenterinc.com, or give him a call at 417-882-1800. We will see you back here next week. Sounds good. All right, up next, it is Tech Tuesday. We've got another find from CES 2020 that you have to see to believe. Don't go anywhere. Ozark Live will be right back.